Well, Rosebud Baker is with <laughs> us. Uh, debut uh, special, by the way, Rosebud Baker, Whiskey Fist. Very funny stand-up special. I watched it in its entirety last night. And uh, you can get it on YouTube at uh, Comedy Central Stand-Up Channel as well. Um, all right. What do we got? Uh, we got an intro. The New York Post is reporting that R. Kelly's ex-wife, Drea Kelly, said she's brokenhearted for their children who have to live with the shame after the singer was convicted of sex trafficking and racketeering. The real victims. The children. Yeah. Oh, you know my thing, which is I wanted to uh, date Harvey Weinstein's ex-wife. She's gorgeous. <laughs> the Marquesa designer lady? Yeah, because yeah. my thing was sort of like when she came in and went, oh, Jesus Christ, the socks, they can't make it into the hamper. They're right, mm -hmm. they're t eight inches away from the hamper. And I'm like, oh, so really, that's an issue? <laughs> so the worst thing you had to deal with? So as a wife, <clears throat> where would you rank this in terms of things you had to deal with? But I now would like to move on to R. Kelly's ex. Well, would you like to hear what she had to say on Good Morning Britain about the whole situation? Yeah, or she can tell me in person. <laughs> so it's very difficult for me. I feel that my heart is in two places. Um, my heart definitely goes out to the survivors and the courage that it takes to even come forward and tell the story. But my heart breaks as a mother because this is now the legacy that my children will have to deal with and their children's children at the end of the day. Mm. I don't know if you remember, mm. but it made me think about Bernie Madoff's kids because I think he had a daughter-in-law who tried to change her name. Well, the son, well, the son killed himself. And the son died by suicide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, not... she, the thing that stood out to me is she said, my children's children. I'm like, how long do you think we're going to be talking about R. Kelly? Yeah. It's a good point. Also, Kelly's kind of a common name. It's true. By the way, and everyone's grandpa was a racist piece of shit. So you had a yeah. pedophile. You know yeah. what I mean? They're all alcoholics. Yeah. They're all racist. Some pedophiles. You know, we turn the page. And also, the good news is, is Kelly is a very popular name. Right. And yeah. it's not like if you met somebody in 25 years named Patrick Kelly and you'd go, wait, wait a, a minute. minute. <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I know your work, your family's work. I've been to 23 and me. Well, um, Rosebud, yesterday on the show, we were talking about the fact that there have been a lot of incidents on airlines. And Adam was suggesting... There should really be more because a lot of people are mentally unhinged. A lot of people are on prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's surprising there's not more. Yeah, yeah. surprising there's not more. Then yeah. he uh, wasn't calling for more. He wasn't suggesting <laughs> that more people have uh, assault others in public spaces. Well, it's it's like it's like when you. You know when you drive all day, every day, and all the time, and then at some point you get into an accident and you go, how come I don't get in an Adam, accident every I, nine days? I think that constantly yeah. when I'm driving. I cannot believe the <laughs> random choreography of all these cars merging and rarely do they hit each other. It's 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 astonishing. Well, there, there have been an increase in assaults, and maybe this speaks to your point, Rosebud, of nurses being heroes. Where are these assaults taking place? Hospitals. Mm. NBC News reporting that there has been an increase in uh, hospital, uh, you know, there's frustration, there's ill will, there's discontent, there's COVID. So hospital rage is becoming a thing. One Missouri hospital will be equipping its staff with panic buttons to protect them from violent patients following a startling rise in. In assaults, Cox Medical Center Branson added protection after violent assaults by patients tripled in the past year. According to hospital data, total assaults rose from 40 to 123, injuries climbing from 17 to 78. Well, people are doing a lot less um, conflict resolution mm -hmm. with words and a lot more with hands, I've noticed. Yeah. And there's a kind of thing, this is... Uh, it's it's a sub chapter of this, but it's kind of interesting. If you talk to people, they'll go like, did you see that footage of the people outside the restaurant in New York attacking the hostess? And then someone will go, I think that hope, but the hostess dropped an end bomb. And I'm always like, yeah, you're still not allowed to physically mm. attack people. And then they'll go, yeah, but she used the N word. And I'll go, okay. But you're still not like we're carving out a lot of it. Well, what did the person say? And I'm like, I don't care what they said. You're not allowed 
to put your hands on other people in public spaces. It's kind of an interesting conceit now that we need to find out what the person said because we just had the uh, video footage that didn't have the didn't have the uh, audio hooked up to it or whatever. Oh. But there's a lot like we've we've kind of turned the corner. Most people I talk to like, well, that person punched that person in the Costco. Well, what did they tell them to put their mask up? Like, what, what were they saying? And it's like, doesn't matter what you say. Mm-hmm. Not allowed to yeah, touch yeah. other human beings when you're out and about. Yeah, I mean, I think every time I go to a hospital, I want to hit someone. I don't, but I want to. (laughs) Don't you feel like a lot of those people are beaked up? Like the reason they're there is because they drank too much NyQuil or something and and, uh, washed it down with some fentanyl or something like that. Feel like or, there's people well, that are out of not going to make you want to fight anybody. True, but I, I, I think it's people who are on edge because they're there on behalf of someone else. Like I don't think it's oh. the patient who's who doing mm-hmm. the same. And thing. also, it's you're not giving my mom the treatment yes. she deserves. And the emergency rooms are overcrowded now because of huh. COVID. So maybe my sister got shot, and you're making me sit here for six hours, and no one's coming out to tell me what's going on. I feel like in general. Women are fighting. Women are fighting three thousand percent more than women <laughs> fought when I was growing up. When I was yeah. growing up, you know, an insane novelty it would be if Becky was fighting Sue Ann. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like in. It would have been unthinkable that two women like really physically threw down. Uh, now, and maybe here's an interesting concept: <clears throat> if 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 violence or these sorts of chapters or exchanges if they have doubled in the last decade or whatever it is maybe the doubling is women women. just simply doing it it used to be guys fought guys fought on airplanes in front of bars you know in hospitals and all that kind of stuff women never did women just joined in and now (laughs) women are are the tip of the spear main event Mm -hmm. i myself i'm kind of into that i have not been in a fist fight rose but have you I have. I've started fist fights. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Yeah. Well, I ducked out early. You know, I mean, I'm five three, so I'm I'm really the uh, I'm like the match. You know, mm. I, I'm the match that I'll pour the kerosene, I'll light the match, and then I'll get the hell out of there so somebody else can finish it. <laughs> Which is why I quit drinking. Oh, but okay. it's definitely uh, I I do. I like physical uh, violence. I like to throw myself in. Like if I die, I'm going to just throw, I want to get ripped apart by wolves. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something about it. I get jacked up thinking about it. You definitely need to have kids. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to be on the sidelines of a football game. Just yeah. starting fights. Oh, someone hits her kid. Going, like, oh. It goes low on hey, her kid. Hey, if that ump is squeezing yeah. her kid while That's he's on right. the mound. You're going, you're yeah. going full Woody Hayes. <laughs> Look it up, yes. bitches. <laughs> hey, I have important citrus, yes. citrus-based news. Mm. Because yesterday I learned that Adam's very interested in having a lemon or lime in his beverage. Don't get him confused. This is critical. Mm. I will not get him confused. And then... I read about this, and I'm honestly a little bit upset about it. And Can I, I say this? Yes. With lemon and lime. Tell me. You know, I've always said, like, indicators, indicators. Like, in, in Los Angeles, when we started putting barbed wire around the freeway signs, mm-hmm. we needed to stop and go, what's going on as a society? And I'm now going to say, after ordering... 2000 drinks where I said with a lemon and had the person looked at me and go lime and I go lemon <laughs> and they go okay and then they bring it back with the lime we now must change the spelling or pronunciation of one of those two either lemon or lime Too we close. have it's, it's it's push and pull we can't have the same letters everyone's banging the door in front of the diner my my feeling is is we're so fucking dumb and out of it now that we can no longer have those two start with the same letter. It's a bridge too far. Do you know that the green <laughs> Skittles have been apple flavored and rightly so? Skittles has announced that they're bringing back lime, which was oh, yeah. one of the five original they, flavors. They changed it over 10 or so years ago. Lime was a staple flavor for more than 30 years before being replaced by green apple in 2013. I was the weird kid who liked the lime. Well, now it's back. I don't now understand who the eats the lime. Weird adult that yeah. likes the lime. It's unclear why they've canceled Green Apple. In a press release, a Skittles brand manager just said, quote, the fans have spoken and it's time for lime 
to return. Both original and sour packs of Skittles will now feature orange, lemon, strawberry, grape, and lime. Can we figure this out? There are people, maybe it starts when you're young, who like the Skittles and the Red Vines and the Good and Plenty's and the candy that's not chocolate, nuts, nougat, caramel based. That Just was me. That, yeah. that like almost sweet for the sake of being sweet. Red Vines, uh, Skittles. Starburst. I, I'm the weird mm-hmm. kid who liked uh, candy corns. Right. Okay. Yeah. And now oh, I have heard them over like Hershey's or whatever. I was always like Snickers bars yeah, and peanut butter cups and toy. Like it had to have some nougaty, chocolatey, somethingy. The others just felt like sweet for the sake of sweet. How how do we ex- explain this? Like, what do you think that? What do you think is you don't you're not a yummy face guy. No, I'm you not like at all. sushi. And I, I and did like the Snickers of and, the world, but I, I preferred. My kids yeah. are the same. They would much prefer like a gummy bears to a Twix. You know, my favorite candy bar was when I used to eat candy was uh, Charleston Chew, I which is those. all nougat, it had a little yeah. right. thin chocolate layer. But mm-hmm. it was the nougat. It was the chewy sort of nougaty. Rosebud, if you had kids, which would they prefer? <laughs> if I had, <laughs> if I had kids, I would hope that they'd prefer. Um, like chocolate, nougaty, you know, something that has some substance to it. That's that's my hope. I want to have a kid that's got some class, you know? <laughs> I agree. How dare yes. you? I agree. We judge. <laughs> rightfully um, so. David Letterman posed as a reporter. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this. It's kind of amazing. He crashed media day for the Brooklyn Nets. I heard about this. Was he there or was it virtual? He was there with his full white Santa beard. God bless. <laughs> Let's take a listen. Here he is interviewing Kevin Durant, who I'm not sure understands that it is, in fact, David Letterman. Dave from Basketball Digest. Kevin, uh, KD, why, why do people call you KD? Um, Can I call you KD? Or? Yeah. Okay. My, f- my first name is Kevin. Uh huh. Okay. Right. And my second name, my last I, I, name. Uh, my second name. My last name is Durant with a D. KD. Uh, this year, how, what percentage do you plan on giving on the court? 90, 95, 100, 110? What are we looking at? Uh, 110. 110. <laughs> this is what he should be doing. This is what the, original, yeah, the, the whole comedian should be doing. I agree. Pop up in random places and just be funny. Uh, it was delightful. It's weird. It why, did, why did he do that? <laughs> why I- not? I mean, no, because Letterman is has a not. Reason. Yeah, he doesn't get he's out of not, the house. Um, uh, who's the guy from um, that pops up at people's? Bill Murray. He's not Bill Murray. Right, he's not just yes. trying to be quirky. It's more mercurial. Well, I'm assuming that this must be part of a show. I, there's, I know all kinds of comedians, and there are comedians that will do anything or show up or do or do stuff. And then there's the, the Fred Willard types. doesn't kind of John Stewart's kind of that way too. It just, you just not going to do something unless there's something to do. You know, it's, well, you yeah. saw his, his show on, uh, I think, believe Netflix, where he not only interviews somebody for a one on one sit down, but, you know, he's with Dave Chappelle in Ohio. He's frequently on location mm-hmm. places. He's in the aisle of a grocery store. But he's getting paid a shitload of yes. money, and he doesn't want to be there. That's right. what I'm. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Critical. Oh, breaking news! He must have something. He must have something coming out, right? I mean, there's. He so. He's got to have I a see. project coming up or it something. It seems that way. Yes. Uh, breaking news: the Elvis movie uh, comes out in June of 2022. Mm. Directed by Baz Luhrmann. Mm. Well, I'm he looking forward to Moulin it. Rouge. It's We're referencing a, a bygone segment on this show. I figured. Oh, okay. I figured as much. I did. That was two segments ago. All right. I just wanted to get <laughs> no, Rosebud on board. Teresa's like, I it figured. Be, How did you got me? That was today? <laughs> Her days are numbered I think it'd be so here. funny if this is how we found <laughs> out that, that Letterman missed his job, though. I think this is like, if this was just something where we found out that he wandered from home because he missed his job. <laughs> Like I would, I would almost prefer that be the story. I just talked to Bobby Rahal, who owns the team Letterman Rahal, I guess the indie team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about doing some work with Bobby, maybe a doc, his son races, pretty famous race car driver. And uh, he says he will deliver Letterman. So uh, we got that 
but we oh, shall see. Right. Well, I have a romantic story in honor of Rosebud's recent engagement and marriage. Oh, nice. A woman mm-hmm. in Maine was arrested last Thursday after calling in two bomb threats to her boyfriend's workplace. She was tracked down and admitted that there weren't any bombs. She just wanted to spend time with him. Bomb threats were kind of a zero burger pre 9-11. And then they became a very big deal after that. Bomb threats were sort of things kids would call them into school because they forgot their homework or something. It was kind of a running joke. Now it's, it's a very serious affair these yeah. days. Yeah, you're right. Because authorities went and tracked her down. Her name's Kayla Blake. She admitted that there were not any bombs. She had made the threats to spend more time with her boyfriend who worked at uh, Puritan Medical Products where she had called in the bomb threat. She was then charged with felony terrorizing. She's being held in jail where she is unable Ooh. to spend time with her boyfriend. You know what the mistake was? Bomb threat number two. Mm-hmm. She done it once. Like they're just, you know, then there's all, it's all hands on deck. But they were probably, you know, the FBI's mm-hmm. been called. Oh my God. Mm, we're looking at her. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm, I could become that woman. I'm not that far from being that woman. Like when they make the biopic. <laughs> Jesus. Do, do you do any acting? I do. Yeah. you. This could... is almost like when, when, you know, when Margot Robbie played Tanya yes. Harding right. mm-hmm. and we were all like, it's a reach, you know, mm-hmm. this like it upsets me because if I were playing that woman, people would go, that makes sense. Like, no <laughs> one would be like, right. no we one would be like, that's a reach. We saw the, the picture of the woman is sort of as white trashy as as you can get a little bit bloated, perhaps not on the keto. I mean, how do you look greasy on a pixelated photo? Yeah, definitely not a Jew. Yeah. And I but but see. First off, you're very attractive, but I'm not going to argue with you. I think you could become, I could, you could fall well, into this role. Charlize Theron was a monster. That's right. That's right. Jessica Chastain is Tammy Faye. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the aforementioned Margot Robbie. Huh? Mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. En- in entertainment news, it seems like Will and Jada Pinkett Smith enjoy giving us some little hints about their marriage. Uh, and here is the latest. In the new GQ cover story... Will Smith reveals that he and Jada started out monogamous, but, quote, evolved past it. I know more about their marriage than I know about most of my friends' marriages. Oh, yeah, me too. Why do we know so much? So he tells GQ, I'm quoting, Jada never believed in conventional marriage. Jada had family members that had an unconventional relationship, so she grew up in a way that was very different than how I grew up. He adds, we have given each other trust and freedom with the belief that everybody has to find their own way and marriage for us can't be a prison. Oh, well, then that would assume that any of us that were monogamous were as essentially incarcerated with the bomb threat lady. That's right. This is the thing that I can't stand about like open relationships is that they always talk about, they always talk about their relationship. Like it's more evolved right. than someone else's Yes, when it's really just like, you're just, you found a creative way to get jealous. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. True. No, it's, it's, it's the same way cult leaders speak like, mm. Hey, if you're yeah. in love with all the 14 year olds, then mm. why would God want yeah. you to stop sharing that love? Break free of societal yeah, they, restraints. Right, you're right. It's, it's the same shit. People do at nudist camps. Mm. You know, they go, it's yeah. so liberating. I think now I can, I can play snooker with my ball sack <laughs> hanging out. Like, it's like, you're not evolved. You're fucking perv or you're weird or you're an outlier. Don't give me this like one day after several, you know, after I'm reincarnated 10 times and come back, then one day I could look forward to boning other women within my marriage. Yeah, Like, yeah, if you could, ju- if you just got evolved enough, you might be able to fuck my wife. And it's like, <laughs> what? Who says I w- who says anybody wants to? First of all, I mean, you know, Jada's hot as hell, but I just I just get so frustrated at the the language that they use. They sound so brainwashed and they sound like um, it's just obnoxious. But it's I'm ki- like it's kind of like jeans with holes in them. When it's on a rich person, you go, yes. oh, that looks good. And when it's on a poor person, you go, poor sack. Look at them. So yeah. it's like if, if this is happening with the poor sack people, it sounds like, oh, boy, this is a fucking shit show. 
This is going to be over in 10 minutes. It definitely had a little bit of sanctimoniousness. He was at the table. What is that clip, Chris, where he was on like red, red table, table or whatever? Yeah. He's just sitting there while she's oh. talking like, I it's I blew a, everybody. I know you don't yeah. know memes. entanglement. Yeah. That's, yes. yes. that's, that's become, I know you don't know memes. That's become a meme. Oh, Sad, oh, that's Sad, so Sad Will Smith. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, the entanglement with the rapper. That's yeah. August. Yeah. August Here's there he is, there yeah. Is. yeah. Oh, no. Sad will it's like Although Michael I, Jordan crying. I will say this in terms of evolution as a society, seeing a black guy being cuckolded for a change. Nice. It's a change. Of, it's nice. It means we've arrived. <laughs> I'll leave you with this story. Halloween is coming up. Goodwill's annual Halloween survey found costumes related to TV shows, movies, and pop culture are number one again this year. 28% of people planning to dress up will wear a costume that falls into that category. Paranormal things like witches, ghosts, and zombies are next at 25%. Then unique one-of-a-kind costumes at 24%. And it turns out a lot of people are trick-or-treating this year, 74% of Americans plan to do at least something for this year, and that does include both in-person and virtual events. Hey, Rosebud, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to tell you how to dress for Halloween, but uh -oh. you got a good sense of humor. Your husband's <laughs> obviously established. How about he gets into that one-man horse outfit, you know, the one-man yeah. horsey outfit, you know? Yep. Yeah. With the whip, and you go as Haitian refugee. Oh Don't you God. think that would raise a few eyebrows? I think we could get some heat for the special cooked up. You know what I mean? Get some eyeballs on that thing. I agree. How, there's a Why? lot of specials right now. How is she supposed to pierce through? Yeah, how are you going to stand out? I know. I need to do something. We were planning on actually just some light elder abuse, but this might actually <laughs> do it. This would be, this could really get some eyes on it. You're right. It'll cause a lot of controversy. Bill Maher probably defend you now. Yeah. This version of Bill Maher yeah. will probably defend you. Mm -hmm. I'll speak yeah. out. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we'll really figure out who your friends are. Or like the get out there really just... Just let the let the commercial part of my career mm -hmm. fall to the fall to pieces, but get all the eyes I can. Yes, mm -hmm. or like the Apple Skittle, you could get canceled. I'm Teresa Strasser, and that was the news. I'm gonna snap you like a twig. That was the news with Teresa Strasser. Fuck you, CNN.